What's up everybody and welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. Today I'll be going over some of the top tips and tricks I've learned over the past year or two, both participating in and running over 50 remote whiteboard interviews and brainstorming sessions. So if you're ready to jump in, let's get to it. All right, so we'll start off with tip number one, ask questions. Now this might seem really straightforward, but it could be very tempting to jump straight into sketching or solutions early on, especially when you have something like a design tool sitting right in front of you. If you're interviewing, you'll want to clarify the role of your interviewer. See if they'll play the role of a product manager or a UX designer. See if they'll brainstorm with you. See if they're just gonna provide requirements and really understand what the relationship between yourself and the interviewer is. During this first phase of whiteboarding, you'll wanna spend a lot of time focusing on the user, the user requirements, and the business requirements. You'll wanna take some time to flesh out the user itself and understand who the persona is that's gonna be using your application. You'll be referring back to your user a lot over the course of the rest of the whiteboarding session, so make sure to spend time to flesh this out. Ask questions of your interviewer or the team you're whiteboarding with to really get to the bottom of the user and their problems. Whenever you run into situations where your interviewer or team member can't answer the questions, make an assumption, that's perfectly fine. We're really looking through your thought process and how you gather information. It's just as important in how you gather and synthesize information as it is on how you execute on it. So that's what interviewers are looking for in this moment. Also during this time, you'll wanna be focusing on the business needs as well. Ask questions about what the business goals are and the needs and even constraints that the business may have so you can understand what you're designing with them. At the end of this phase where you've been asking a lot of questions of your interviewer, you should have a good understanding of who your user is, what their core needs are, and what the business needs are. You'll be designing solutions across the rest of the whiteboard session, focusing on the information that you've already learned. So make sure that you've spent some time to flesh these ideas out. Tip number two is to explain your thinking. Remember, it's all about your thought process. We wanna see how you think, break down a problem, approach it and solve it, more so than we wanna see the design output in the midst of these interviews. Sometimes it can be really difficult to interact and talk back and forth with your interviewer as you're sketching. It's okay to spend a little bit of time silently sketching. Just make sure once you've done a few things that you pause and run it by your interviewer to explain your thinking because these are the pieces of information that they're looking for the most. It's also good to pause after each question and clarify with your interviewer what's going on so you're all on the same page as you move between the different pieces of the whiteboard interview. Something that you should keep in mind as you're going is to be ready for challenge questions. The interviewer will likely throw some things in as you're going to challenge your solutions or challenge the information that you've already gathered. This is to see how you work on the fly and adjust to new problems as they come up. Be prepared to pause where you are in the midst of your thinking to pivot to a new idea and begin developing out something new. This is a critical skill that interviewers are looking for, so being flexible and able to think on the fly is really important. Tip number three, take breaks to recap. Now this is a bit of a pro move to be honest with you. I've only seen a few people really implement this, but the ones that have have been really successful. Normally whiteboard exercises are broken down into a few phases. You start asking questions and gathering requirements, then you move into some early ideation where you're considering different concepts, and then you're gonna move into actual implementation or sketching of a particular solution or flow. And then finally, you're gonna wrap up and explain your final solution and next steps. Try to pause after each one of those phases and recap what you've done so far. Right after you finish gathering your requirements, pause and run through them with the interviewer and make sure you're on the same page. The same goes for when you're measuring your concepts or your ideas, and then as you move into sketching. Recap exactly what you did and summarize your thinking. This will give you a lot of points with the interviewer and they'll understand clearly what you were trying to do. Lastly, what you can do when you're in the end of the whiteboard session is talk about what you would do next. Tell them the research you would run, how you would change the design, and also what metrics you would track to see if this was successful. This helps them to understand that your thinking is sound and solid and you're taking a rational and calculated approach to the entire design process and not just focusing on a whiteboard session. It makes the entire session an idea feel much more real and grounded and shows your control and command over the entire design process. Next up is tip number four and the one that I couldn't stress the most. Make sure that you have pen and paper on hand. Now, when you're first approaching whiteboard interviews, especially if you're newer to design, you're thinking that your solution and the UI is the primary thing that they're looking for. But in reality, it's not about the UI. We really are looking for your thought process. 
Now, when I've seen people sketch solutions, sometimes I'll give them some bonus points for having a good understanding of things like mobile patterns or web patterns, but I'm normally not looking too deep into the actual sketches. I'm looking into their solutions, their approach, and their mindset around how the thing that they're sketching solves the problem for the user. So remember, as you're iterating through in a whiteboard session, it's about moving as quickly as possible and exploring ideas in a fluid way. You're normally gonna to wanna to try more than one solution to the problem, and you're gonna to wanna to be freed up to move as quickly as possible. Now, let me give you a brief story about the observations that I've had over the past year or two as someone that's been running remote whiteboard sessions. I've seen a large uptick in people using things like Sketch and Figma in the midst of these whiteboard interviews. I've seen a heavy tendency in people that are using these tools to try to design things in higher fidelity as they're working through their solutions. Tools like Figma and Sketch really slow you down when you're trying to rapidly iterate on ideas in the midst of a whiteboard session. Those tools are really best suited for later in the design process when you're starting to lay things out. And we're not really that concerned about layout here. We're concerned about flow and how the user is actually going to utilize this application. It's actually more in your benefit to just help us understand the story of how a user is going to walk through your application than it is to go fully mock up something. So I would actually advise against using a design tool like this so you don't fall into this trap. We'll have a follow-up video later this week about top tools to use in the midst of a remote design interview. That being said, whatever tool you use, make sure you test it up front. Try to walk through using it for actually sketching and iterating quickly. Give it just five or 10 minutes and see how fast you can move within it. Also, if you know what tool you're gonna to be using for your actual remote session, load it up, be it Amazon Chime, Google Meet, Zoom, whatever, and try to present and share it in one of those sessions. You don't even need anyone else to share it with. Just load up the tool and see if you can present. I've seen a number of tools that people were betting on fall by the wayside in the midst of an interview because they couldn't present the screen. With that in mind, make sure that paper and pen is handy so you can quickly sketch, jot notes, and share it with your interviewer. Also try testing holding up the paper to the camera and make sure that it can be seen. There's a few things you can do to make the camera sharper and focus on your sketches, especially with lighting. So just make sure you test that up front. All right, last one, tip number five. Take advantage of the situation. Now this may sound like cheating, but it's actually a big advantage of interviewing remotely. Most of the time, there's a framework or process that you want to use to step through solving a whiteboard challenge. Whenever you're in person, you normally are not bringing in notes and things of that nature into the whiteboard session. What I've seen and observed over the past few years running these is that because people are remote and they're selecting the tools that they want to use during the whiteboard session, they're normally able to bring in templates that help them put a framework around how they approach the problem. I'll leave a few examples of these in the description below so you can utilize them in your next whiteboard session as well. Normally these focus around how you want to approach the user, how you want to approach the concepts, and how you want to approach the sketching, as I've covered before. But there's a number of different frameworks that will help you step through these. You can either load up a template in whatever application you'd like, or create a few slides or pages yourself in the tool of your choice. Also again, try running through using the framework as you're going to make sure it's something that you're comfortable with. There's a number of different ways to approach a whiteboard challenge. Just make sure that it's something that fits you. And that's it, everyone. My top five tips to remote whiteboard interviews. Now, before we go, I think the biggest thing to mention is don't stress it. A lot of people get really stressed out by whiteboard challenges and whiteboard interviews, thinking that they need to do a lot more than is expected. We're not looking for a final solution. You don't have to boil the ocean or design the perfect application. We're really looking for your approach, how you solve problems, and just how you sketch and iterate through things. It's perfectly fine if you only get through a few steps, as long as we understand how you can think on the fly and approach and break down problems. I've seen people get hired that have sketched entire applications. Other people have sketched just a storyboard and not even shown any application. And some people are somewhere in the middle. But it really does come down to your approach and how you communicate your design process and design thinking to the interviewer. So remember, think out loud as you're going. Also, if you like this video and you're looking for more things on UX design, interviews, and process, be sure to like and subscribe by clicking those bells and buttons down below, and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching.